Hello everyone, we're here for the questions and answers concerning the end of Macbeth, so let's get right down to it. So the first question of course was, will Scotland be better off under Malcolm? How do you feel about the head? Okay, let's see. Uh, first person writes, Macduff describes the turmoil in Scotland. He tells Malcolm that Scotland has been ruled by a tyrant named Macbeth that had many deaths have occurred in Scotland. Yep, that is what happened. But what do you think? These men in the army do not feel safe in the Macbeth dominated society. Yep, that's what he said. Macduff feels sorry and cries for his country. He wants Malcolm to take control of Scotland. Now Malcolm has become king of Scotland. In this play, I feel Malcolm is a compassionate king for his people and his country. Okay. So, I'm giving you your reflection assignment tomorrow, so it's important that I tell you about this, that uh, when I ask a question, right, I'm not looking for a summary of the play, right, I want you to get straight to the answer, right? So if I ask, is Scotland going to be better off under Malcolm, right, don't tell me about what Macduff is saying, right, tell me about Malcolm and tell me about Scotland, right, that's what I want to hear. And I definitely want to hear about the head. Okay, let's see what the next person said. Scotland will be better under Malcolm. He is a good king. Don't forget your ah. Ah, good king. Uh, with justice and self-control, okay? Malcolm spoke, speaks after he becomes king and he told people how he feels and they, every, not very thing. Be careful of spell check, guys, right? Because spell check only picks things up when you're uh, spelling things completely wrong. If you put very thing when you mean everything, right, a spell trick's not going to help you, right? So you got to read it over with your eyes. Uh, everything's back to normal, and he didn't make any selfish action when his father was alive. He was good at self-control. After the death of father, he knows everything. This is a run-on sentence. And he didn't take any actions, so it shows he as how he is responsible and makes right time in right actions. So Scotland be better, new king, this is definitely a run-on sentence, uh, has experience from his father, and he is aware and learns lessons from Macbeth and the result of his bad actions. He will be a good leader. Okay, so uh, for the participation stuff, this is fine, right? So the participation stuff is just the equivalent of someone raising their hand in the class, right? But for tomorrow, I, guys, I need you to pay attention to these run-on sentences, right? Uh, and also subject verb agreement and everything like that, right? So, you know, we need a period. Well, this would be while. While his father was alive, comma, he was good at self-control, period, after the death of his father, comma, right? So give me, give me some periods here, right? There you go. We got to go over this stuff, kind of stuff. Okay, next. Scotland will be better off under Malcolm because he's ready to restore peace and order in the territory by bringing out justice and all those who were wrongfully convicted by Macbeth's mistakes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, no one's talked to me about the head anymore yet. Is someone really bothered by the head? Let's see the next one. Malcolm did a good job when addressing his liege. Uh, he showed leadership by thinking ahead of fixing problems. Macbeth left behind such a... Uh, such as fixing the problems that Macbeth, yeah, we need a that there, left behind, such as bringing back whoever has run off due to Macbeth's tyranny, tyranny and bringing Macbeth's accomplices to justice. Ah, here it is. The severed head is not a shock to me due to its time, however. Macduff holds it as a symbol of power. Ooh, interesting. He is holding power in his hands. He killed Macbeth, a brave general, and later a murderous king, which is seen as an enormous threat Everyone was already aware that he killed Macbeth, and this boastful act is probably a sign that he will become crazy and power-hungry as well, continuing the cycle. Okay, so, wait, so why doesn't it... Okay, this, this is an answer where I think it's sort of going in two directions. Well, okay, you're not shocked, but all right, so you're saying that it's sort of a sign that Macduff is already going down the same path as Macbeth, right, due to his... Um, his tyranny. Okay, that's interesting. I like that point, actually. That's a interesting way of looking at things. So, yeah, that's, that's cool. Let's see another one here. Of course, Malcolm deserves to be king because he's a good person. He never kills innocent people. He didn't commit any crime. And his father was king, and he was built to be king. Uh, in my opinion, there's no done needed there. 
created an army to claim his kingdom, and that confidence showed that he can lead the people. After the death of Macbeth, he became an expert on how he is leading Scotland, so he become became a good king. All right. So most of you, it seems, at least those of you who responded to me today, are on Malcolm's side, right? Which is all right, right? You know, uh, they are, or he is, uh, you know, meant to come in and sort of give the audience a bit of comfort at the end. But I do like that uh, someone picked up on the fact that the head is a bit of a problem symbol, right? It's sort of, I don't know, I, f I find it a little hard to feel good about, oh yeah, this guy's going to be a great king, when they're throwing around a head, right, a human head, right, that's kind of uh, morbid, right, but that's just me, of course, right, if you guys feel happy ending, Malcolm's taking care of it, then that's, that's okay. Now let's see what you guys think are the lessons of the play. Uh, so this first person writes, the lesson we learn at the end of the play is that having too much power can lead to corruption. Macbeth, despite being a brave general in Scotland, he's deceived... Not deceiving. He's, he was deceiving the witches. It would have been the other way around, right? So he's deceived by the witches. The witches tell Macbeth that you will become king of Scotland and Macbeth uh, will be ambitious. So, uh, corruption is definitely an interesting theme of the play, right? And it is definitely something that you might end up writing an essay about uh, in two weeks. I'll talk more about the plan for essays, by the way, on Thursday. Uh, but good under answer, nevertheless. This next person writes, I think that the first lesson is that it is okay being ambitious, but in a good way. Hmm. This means that if you want to get something, you have to work on it without harming others in the process. If not, you will co it will consume you inside, like Lady Macbeth, and you will swim in a pool of blood, like Macbeth. Ooh, okay. The second lesson is that you have to stay away from malicious people who will take you by the wrong way. Whether you believe or not, your decisions could be influenced by these people's interest if you trust them. The witches and Lady Macbeth, for instance. Oh, okay. Very good. Dude, that's a very insightful one. Finally, if you are sure about what is wrong and good, trust yourself. Macbeth had his doubts about killing the king at the beginning, and he felt bad about uh, after the murder. But instead of trusting himself, he went ahead with something that was not in uh, the, his idea entirely. Not entirely his idea. Very good, yeah. That's a solid way of looking at the play as well, right? Where, you know, I am interested in that idea of trusting oneself, right? Because that goes back to uh, the idea that we talked about back when we had a class of free will versus predeterminism. And in your reflection assignment that's coming tomorrow, perhaps you'll be able to write about that subject as well. Uh, this person wrote, We also learned good versus evil, the dangers of ambition, the influence of supranational forces, the contrast of between appearance and reality, loyalty and guilt. Sure, all of those things are in it. I would have liked to hear a bit more detail, right? So, uh, influence of supernatural forces is an interesting one, because you could make the argument that the witches didn't really do anything, right? That they just told him, hey, beware, uh, Macduff, or you're going to be king, and then that's it. Right? But of course you can make the argument that they're actually uh, manipulating everything, and right, their magic is doing everything. Right, Because, again, not all of Shakespeare's audience would believe in magic, but some of them would. So this person writes, Everyone wants some sort of power, and it's easy to manipulate a person when they are guaranteed they will get it, even if what they do might be morally wrong. Ooh. People have to keep their head in the game because even when it is guaranteed, it's not guaranteed. It's not how it would be expected. Not everyone has your best interest, and if they do, they will benefit from it as well, right? So this goes to the fact that the Macbeth trusts those witches, right? So the lesson you get there is how, you know, even a good person can be manipulated into doing the wrong thing. So very interesting point there as well. So, that does bring us to the end of the play, and I hope you guys have managed to enjoy it. I know we've studied it in a bit of a weird way. Uh, I again hope that you manage to find a film version online. I'll, you know, I can't send it to you directly because it technically would be piracy, but, you know, if you do a Google search for, you know, Macbeth and maybe Patrick Stewart, maybe you can find it. I don't know, uh, but it's you haven't watched the play, 
right? Then that's what I think would be the best thing uh, you could do. Now, uh, before we uh, wrap up for today, just a couple points of news, right? News item number one, Quad 4 is coming. So if you're already registered for Quad 4, it is still going to happen. It is going to happen online, I'm afraid, because, well, this pandemic, uh, Doug Ford said today that there's no way schools are going to open on May 4th, and, you know, it sucks, but there's nothing you can do about that, right? We have to wait for this virus to uh, be under control before we open schools again. But Quad 4 is going to happen, and it is going to be online, right? And uh, if I'm teaching it, uh, your course, I don't know what I'm teaching, by the way, uh, then I will do my best to, you know, be as good a teacher as I can be through a camera. Uh, so Quad 4 is uh, still on. If you're registered, I believe you still are enrolled in a class. Uh, if you're uh, still... Um, you know, not registered, then they sent me this link to this Google form, right? And it just is asking some questions, name, email address, phone number, uh, advanced or adult, you guys are adult, and copy of a transcript from Ontario Secondary School. If you're already in the school, then you definitely have, um, I don't think they would worry about that very much. And then you hit agree and then you hit submit, right? So if you're not registered for courses, Quad 4, then uh, please do go and fill out that form. Uh, one other thing, uh, April 20th is the drop date for the course, right? So if you wanted to drop the course, you can on April 20th. That said, don't drop the course. I'm not going to fail you. Uh, the director of education for the TDSB is basically telling everyone, uh, telling all the teachers, you know, raise their marks. Don't fail anyone because it's a pandemic, right? You shouldn't be failing people in a pandemic, which I kind of agree with, right? So if you want to drop the course, you can do it by the 20th, uh, but you shouldn't, right? I'm not planning on on crucifying anyone, right? So uh, don't drop the course, please, but if you do, it's before May, uh, April 20th. Uh, quad 3 is starting on May 5th, Right? Uh, this quad will end on May 1st, right? So you'll have your final grade for quad th 3 on May uh, 1st, right? I'll email it to you guys, I guess. And that is the current plan, right? So um, I will have more details on the final seminars or exams, uh, well, not exam, essay, uh, soon. Uh, I talked to the principal today, and she said, you know, what I was doing might be a little too hard, right? So I'm going to see what I can do, and we'll be talking soon about that. All right? So for now, have a good night, and I hope you all are doing well.